another steamy one today. Hey everyone, good Thursday evening. It's weather for Weather Geeks time. The heat is the story. This is a pretty good early season quote-unquote heat wave across our area. Now, the official definition, if you're a true weather geek, you know that the official definition of a heat wave is three or more consecutive days with highs in the 90s. We're not going to reach that criteria, but by May standards, this is pretty hot stuff. 87 this afternoon after starting at 54 this morning. The record high was out of reach today at 91. The record low also out of reach back in uh, 2002. It was a frosty 29 on today's date. This is the warmest we've been now for 253 days. We had 87 degrees back on September 9th, 2020, and then the pattern changed, and the rest of September was much more fall-like, but early September was uh, kind of a continuation of midsummer-like weather last year. That's kind of been a trend in recent years. September has been like the, the fourth month of summer uh, for all intents and purposes. Uh, meteorological fall begins September 1st, but uh, September has been running warm in, in recent years, especially the first half of the month. But anyway, back here in May, 87 today for the first time since September the 9th. It's also been a dry pattern, of course. We've had now 11 consecutive drier than average days. We're still running a surplus for the month thanks to that very wet Mother's Day, about an inch and a half worth of rain at the airport on Mother's Day. But if it were not for that, we would be in the hole for the month of May. I looked at uh, some of the records, and uh, if we get out to 13 consecutive dry days, that's getting into not unheard of territory, but pretty rarefied territory to see a, a stretch of dry days that long in the month of May. May typically is a month that we see fairly frequent precipitation. All of that's been off to our west, though. The pattern is all blocked up, so it's active in the middle of the country, out in the Pacific Northwest, the Rocky Mountain states, but all is quiet uh, in most locations east of the Mississippi. It's very warm, but it's not humid. Uh, dew points are not like they would be in July, most of July anyway. Uh, dew points currently in the upper 40s. The more humid air is out here. Dew points are in the 60s across the Mississippi Valley, out into the Plain States. That humid air is not going to come here for at least a few more days. All right, some uh, long-range news this evening. Around this time of the month, we get uh, the first stab at the next month's forecast from NOAA, uh, the National National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. And uh, it shows modest odds of a warmer-than-average month across eastern Ohio and western PA. You'll notice nowhere in the lower 48 states is a cooler-than-average month favored in the month of June. What about precipitation? A little bit of a stronger signal here with pretty decent odds, pretty good odds, I would say, of uh, June coming out in the wash as somewhat wetter than average here locally. Also, we got an update on the three-month seasonal forecast for meteorological summer, June, July, and August. And nowhere in the lower 48 is a cooler than average summer favored, although equal chances of a warmer than average and cooler than average season exist uh, across the middle and upper Mississippi valleys into parts of the, the northern Great Lakes. Around here, uh, the smart money is on summer ending up as a warmer than average season. Also, we have elevated odds of a wetter than average summer. Not to say it's going to be super wet. We may even have some prolonged dry stretches, but when you look at the three months as a whole, it should come out in the wash as somewhat wetter than average. That's, where, that's what the odds favor as we speak. All right, no rain, though, over the next couple of days. So what you see is what you get into Friday. A uh, veil of high clouds at times. Otherwise, just a nice-looking day and very, very warm. In fact, tomorrow's record of 89. I don't think we're going to break it, but it's at least within reach. If we got to 87 today, there's really no reason why we'd be any cooler tomorrow. So it'll probably be at least 87, maybe even flirting with that record of 89 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Now, Saturday, perhaps a little bit of a thicker cloud cover in the afternoon. I don't think it's any worse than partly sunny. But a few more clouds, and this weak front most likely brings showers to parts of New York and New England. Around here, though, I think it's going to run out of gas, and I, I don't have any showers in our forecast for late in the day on Saturday. Another front, though, on Sunday, another weak one, but conditions are, I think, a little bit more favorable with this one to at least try to spark a shower or a storm towards the end of the day on Sunday. If you have outdoor plans this weekend, a lot of people do in mid to late May, uh, Saturday's fine. Most of Sunday's fine. If we get wet, I think it's going to be pretty late in the day on Sunday towards the evening. All right, the uh, pattern right now, it's kind of blocked up. It's kind of a classic omega block pattern, the uh, configuration like this, like the Greek letter omega. That's typically a pattern that features a lot of stagnant weather across the lower 48. 
you know, it's actually a little bit chilly underneath this huge upper low across the uh, desert southwest into the four corners. Now, this uh, pattern is not going to be around in perpetuity. I do think this pattern will break down, and this will allow some of that higher moisture air to come east of the Mississippi before the weekend is through. So the dew points come up on Sunday. They stay, stay elevated into Monday and Tuesday, even into Wednesday. I think there'll be a few rounds of showers and storms next week, most likely Monday and again on Wednesday. If we have a severe weather risk next week, I've got my eye early in the game here on next Wednesday. That looks to be the day that a fairly strong front will try to track our way. But hey, that's six days away. We've got plenty of time to iron that out. In the meantime, here's a look at the high temperature forecast. Uh, 87 tomorrow and then an 86 on Sunday and then an 87 on Tuesday before cooler times for the tail end of next week. How long do those cooler times last? Probably not all that long. Uh, we got a fresh run of the European weeklies tonight, the uh, set of modeling that goes out 46 days, issued twice a week. Uh, you know the drill if you've seen me show these maps before. Take everything with a grain of salt, especially as we get out into the longer range. But it's always interesting to look at what this uh, suite of modeling has. And we're looking here at the uh, kind of the 500 millibar level, about 18,000 feet above our heads, looking for ridges and troughs and general pattern clues. And this shows, you know, the pattern snapping back to, to warm again after that brief cool down at the end of next week. You know, as we run up to Memorial Day, you know, no troughs across our region at the end of the month. So overall, this looks like a, a pattern that favors warmth. And as we go into June, I don't think a whole lot of will change in the large scale. You know, typically the jet stream gets pretty weak in summer. It's hard to pick out really distinct features as you go out through time because everything's just a little more muted in summer as the as the jet retreats way off to the north. But as we go into June here, the modeling is showing, if you look carefully, you know, a little bit of modest troughing here out west and downstream of that a little modest ridging in the east. And, and you know, the CPC June outlook does show odds favoring a warmer than average June. And based on this modeling, some of the other modeling as well, that makes sense. Whether it will be a scorching hot month, eh, too early to say, but it certainly does not look like a cool month compared to the average around here. That'll do it for me tonight on Weather for Weather Geeks. I hope you'll join me in future editions of this video, and thanks, as always, for checking out this week's versions of the Valley's most in-depth forecast.